So day three's word is thread. And I think I'll do a bit of a follow-up to the change thing from yesterday when it comes to doing additions. The thing that I'm always curious about is the path of evolution that game design takes. Um, for example, when I talked about the changes that have happened with anime RPGs in my um, BESM review and in some of my interviews, I talked about how there's been a shift where the generic anime um, RPG is kind of on the back burner, relatively, compared to anime RPGs that are designed to emulate a specific style of anime. Um, whether, whether that be a more sh whether that be a more shonen affair like in Shonen Final Burst, whether that be um, something like Magical Burst, which is trying to emulate um, Maho Shoujo. And so and so on. And it's one of those things where game design, like a lot of mediums, is not a vacuum. It's very much a case of the old adage that art takes influence from other art. And it's seeing that change unfold and that and the and putting the thread together that I will always find fascinating. Because I'm seeing how one reacts to the other in a successive pattern. That's also why I'm oh, I'm always interested in the fact that even though the OSR was an attempt to go back, as time went on with that particular project, it didn't go back as far as people might have thought it was going to. Because even with that new san new old sandbox. People still wanted to expand it and are still wanted to do their own spins on it. That's not to say the idea of OSR was a mistake, but it's more of if you thought that trying to go just classics was going to satisfy people, um, I got a bridge I'd like to sell you. When it comes to where that thread is going to go in the future, um, obviously I don't have a crystal ball as much as anybody, and I'm pretty sure I'm going to jinx things. But I do think that in the realm of D and D, I would not be surprised if I see a old if I see a tradition versus expansion rift within the next five years. We're already kind of seeing that, given the differences between the third party material and the first party material. But I do think that rift is going to deepen as the years go on. Um, and in the same vein, I do think that um some of the games that have been that have been on the outside when it comes to that particular bubble will start to get a bit more attention out of people's frustrations not saying that there's going to be some big wave in the matter but it is going to be a slow build it's kind of like how for after the market crash there was the complete death of the middle market when it came to video games but in the last in the last 10 or so years it slowly crawled its way back where the where um you have indie games that have a bigger and bigger budget to the point where mid-level titles are more of a thing even if they're not a glorified farm system like they used to be and it's in that regard that i th where i think things are going to be interesting now of course if you're following nothing but first party D&D &D, you're going to be missing out on a whole lot of these threads but the way the RPG scene works and the way that the D&D scene works are always going to be walled off from each other. And when somebody go, tries to go back, it's like go from um, the wider spectrum to just D&D. &D. It always feels like you're stepping a few pages back into some sort of relic. That's not to dismiss D&D &D in this regard, but it is so much set in its own ways that it does feel isolated from the rest of the role-playing game communities.